As all of this was happening, Petitioner was handcuffed on the ground crying, whimpering, and clearly in urgent distress, and begging for anyone to help him. <clears throat> as he began slipping into a serious psychiatric episode caused by the officer's conduct. Where's my dog? Where's my dog? Please help me. Why are y'all doing this to me? I was giving you my ID. It's on your body cam. All I do is smile and wave at people. I just want to know where my dog is. Where's my dog? That gives you no right to tase my dog and tackle me. I was literally handing you my ID. Where's my dog, man? Where's my dog? What did y'all do with my dog? Why are y'all treating me like this? I'm a disabled veteran with a service dog. They won't tell me where Sunshine is. Where's my dog? Not a single police officer would respond to Petitioner, and instead they openly laughed at and demeaned him as clearly shown in the body cam footage. Until in October 2021 in Gastonia, North Carolina, two Gastonia police officers showed up to a call and made a choice to abuse a homeless veteran and his service dog, resulting in the death of his service dog. The victim, Joshua Rohrer, was charged with panhandling and resisting arrest, but the officers even stated on their own body cameras that they knew he wasn't panhandling, and he definitely didn't resist arrest. Joshua Rohrer and attorneys claim that the narratives written by the attacking officers Maurice Taylor III and Sierra Brooks do not match the body cam footage. Since the incident, Joshua Rohrer has petitioned city officials to release the body cam footage to the public to show what actually happened on that day. News of the incident spread through social media and even mainstream news, and month after month, more and more people showed up to support Joshua and petition local government to release the body cam footage. Hi, I'm Spike Cohen. When we came here last month, we were here for two main things, and those were number one, to try to get you guys on our side to call for the release of the body cam footage so that we can know once and for all what happened that night. And then the other thing that we were calling for was for y'all to work with Pastor Moses so that he can resume feeding and housing homeless people in his church as he is commissioned to do as a pastor. Unfortunately, we know what's happened in the last month. Nothing. Month after month after month. People have arrived in person to ask city officials to please show the public what happened that day. Phone calls have been made, emails have been sent, but city officials have completely ignored the people. This month, July of 2022, charges against Joshua Rohr were finally dropped, but the body cam footage has still yet to be released. On July 19th, 2022, supporters again returned to City Hall to take turns reading from a petition that was sent to the Chief of Police and City officials. The petition shows a narrative that contradicts that of the attacking officers, and claims that the body cam footage will show that this is the true narrative. I've said so much today, I just want to read from a petition that was delivered um, to Chief Britton as well as Travis Page. On October 13th, 2021, an anonymous caller contacted 911 at 6.29 p.m. stating that several individuals were in different areas of shopping centers with dogs and asking, quote, okay, so um, is it legal for these adults to be standing on the intersection with a dog asking for money? They're using the dog to get money is what they're doing. The dispatcher operator stated, quote, I don't know if there's anything illegal about that. I'm not an officer, but I can definitely send an officer out there, end quote, to which the caller then stated that, quote, there has to be something someone can do about this. This is bull crap. They're using this poor animal. The operator asked if the caller, quote, thinks the dog's in danger, like are they going in the street? Like how are they using the dogs to get money? The caller responded that, quote, that's putting two and two together. They're using this dog to make people feel sorry for them and give them money rather than actually soliciting money from anyone. Despite the caller being unable to identify a crime, the dispatcher sent one or more officers to speak with the caller and determine if petitioner was engaging in any unlawful activities. Within minutes of the call, Officer Brooks approached Petitioner at the intersection of Cox Road and Gaston Mall Drive and stated that she had received at least three calls claiming that the petitioner was panhandling. The entirety of this incident and what followed was captured by multiple police body cameras, which the petitioner is now requesting that the court release to the public. Petitioner, Petitioner's Counsel, Dave Dow, Kim Cooper, and Kelly Green have all viewed the body cam image with camera footage, which based on their notes is detailed in part throughout the remainder of this petition.
Officer Taylors and Brooks falsely accuse, assault, and unlawfully arrest petitioner, and in the process, tase his service dog. After Officer Brooks first approached petitioners, stating that an unidentified caller, caller had claimed petitioner was panhandling, Officer Brooks immediately changed her story by claiming she just witnessed petitioner solicit money from a bystander, and as a result, demanded the petitioner's ID. Petitioner responded that he had not asked for or solicited money from anyone. Rather, a woman flagged petitioner down and offered him money. Officer Brooks then radioed for backup and Officer Taylor arrived in seconds. Upon his arrival, Officer Brooks repeated her claim that she just saw the petitioner solicit money. When petitioner once again stated that he had not done so, Officer Brooks finally acknowledged that she had not, in fact, witnessed any such solicitation and instead altered her claim by stating, quote, things can be inferred, end quote, and that she, quote, she interpreted it as asking for money because he walked out to the car. Realizing petitioner had done nothing illegal, Officer Taylor attempted to create a separate basis to arrest petitioner by stating that, quote, you can go to jail for violating this ordinance if you keep arguing, and, quote, you're going to go to jail if you keep arguing with law officers. Contrary to this allegation, the body camera footage plainly refutes this Officer Taylor's claims that the petitioner was arguing or in any way engaging with combative or inappropriate behavior. Being well aware that Excuse the petitioner... Excuse Mr. Ross. I'm sorry, your time is up. Thank you. I'm going to continue reading the petition uh, from where uh, Mr. Ross left off. Being well aware that petitioner was a disabled veteran and a need of service dog, as reflected by Officer Taylor's previous interaction with the petitioner, as well as demonstrated specific comments made by both officers in the body camera recordings, Officer Brooks deliberately escalated the situation and preyed on the petitioner's disability by taunting the petitioner that the officers would take the petitioner's service dog, i.e., quote, you're going to jail and we're going to call animal control on your dog. With both officers still being well aware that there was no basis to detain, much less arrest, the petitioner, Officer Taylor, in a series of highly revealing statements, shifted his attention from the unsupportable claims that the petitioner was panhandling to Officer Taylor's anger that the woman discussed uh, above had pre uh, prevented him from arresting petitioner several days earlier. As he expressed his disdain for the woman's interference, Officer Taylor manufactured yet another attempted basis to arrest the petitioner, i.e., that Officer Taylor had instructed the petitioner not to stand idly on public property during their, in uh, during their interaction several days earlier, which was not a crime. At that point, Officer Taylor asked the petitioner's identification, and despite the petitioner reiterating that he had done nothing wrong, the petitioner removed his military ID from his wallet and slowly extended his hand toward Officer Taylor to comply with his demand. With no explanation, Officer Taylor refused the, peti the petitioner's valid military ID and demanded that the petitioner produce a valid state ID, with which the petitioner, a homeless individual, does not and is not required to own. With the petitioner's arm still extended with his military ID projecting from his fingers towards Officer Taylor, Officer Taylor, with no warning whatsoever, grabbed the petitioner's arm and slammed him on the hood of the police car. When this occurred, Sunshine was sitting in her bed approximately 10 feet from the petitioner, Officer Taylor, and Officer Brooks. However, based on the amount of force used, in addition to the officer's deliberate and unnecessary use of extremely painful submission tactic on the petitioner's arms, the petitioner yelled, somebody help me, I'm sorry, excuse me, quote, somebody help me, end quote. Sensing panic, Sunshine moved towards the petitioner, jumped on the hood of the police car, and began licking the petitioner's face, which is what the petitioner's service dog is trained to do to assist the petitioner to manage panic attacks or PTSD episodes. Although Sunshine was not standing close to either of the officers growling or engaging in any threatening behaviors, Officer Taylor, who at that point had moved approximately six feet away from both the petitioner and Officer Brooks, removed his taser and yelled at the uh, at petitioner to, quote, call your dog off, end quote. As instructed, petitioner ordered Sunshine to get down from the car, which she did, after which Sunshine stood calmly to the left of the petitioner and several feet from Officer Brooks, who was located to the petitioner's right side. Petitioner who was not struggling or Mr. resisting. Mr. Garcia, your time is up. Thank you. And perhaps the most egregious action of this incident, which is shown unmistakable, which is shown with unmistakable clarity in the body cam footage, Officer Taylor, who was still standing approximately six feet away from the petitioner, Officer Brooks and Sunshine suddenly and falsely yelled that Sunshine had just bitten him and with no justification whatsoever, fired his taser into the back of Sunshine, who was facing away from Officer Taylor. At the exact, at the at the exact moment where Officer Taylor falsely claimed that petitioner's service dog had bitten him, officer's body camera provided a clear and unobstructed view of Officer Brooks looking directly at Sunshine, which left no 
the question that Officer Brooks knew without, with absolute certainty that Sunshine did not bite Officer Taylor and that Officer Taylor had fabricated this basis for tasing the petitioner's service dog. Simultaneously, Officer Taylor's firing his taser, simultaneously with Officer Taylor's firing of his taser, Officer Brooks violently slammed petitioner's face, slammed petitioner face first into the ground where the petitioner believed that the officers were firing bullets at Sunshine, attempted to throw himself between what he believed was Officer Taylor's gun and his service dog in, any, in an attempt to save Sunshine, by intercepting what he believed would be one more bullet. Officer Brooks' unjust, unjustified decision to slam petitioner on the ground caused significant damage, significant damage to his face and created a life-threatening blood clot in the petitioner's knee, which the officers refused to allow the petitioner to obtain medical care to address. As petitioner laid on the ground crying out in pain, Officer Brooks then informed the petitioner, quote, I'll you'll take that charge. Taylor was bit by the dog, end quote, and began placing handcuffs on the petitioner's wrist. Critically, as, offers, as Officer Brooks was handcuffing Petitioner, the body cam footage shows Petitioner still holding the military ID that he attempted to provide to Officer Taylor, i.e. the fabricated justification of Petitioner's, of the, for petitioner's detention and arrest. Officer Taylor, and, Officer Taylor and Brooks fabricate their story to deceive their colleagues and supervisors as well as threaten and uh, disparage witnesses. As the officers began to realize that a sizable group of stunned and extremely angry bystanders had gathered around the scene and witnessed what the officers had done, Officer Taylor began attempting to further promote his false justification for tasing Sunshine by yelling to the crowd that, quote, the dog bit me, the dog bit me, end quote. Despite the body cam footage showing that Officer Brooks knew this claim was unequivocally false, Officer Brooks attempted to bolster Officer Taylor's false accusation by stating, quote, the dog bit him, did y'all see his dog bite him? With no hesitation, one of the increasingly irate crowd members openly disputed Officer Brooks, and claim, Officer Brooks' claim and stated, the dog has never bitten anybody. At approximately the same time, a multitude of additional police vehicles began arriving on the scene, one of which included, included a superior to Officer Taylor. With the crowd growing increasingly incensed, incensed at the inexcusable police actions they had just witnessed, Officer Taylor began immediately attempting to convince his fellow officers of his false narrative that Joshua had engaged in some unlawful action that the dog initially barked and bit my foot but didn't break my boot and this dog initially bit me. Realizing the crowd had witnessed exactly what the officers had done, Officer Taylor stated, it bit my foot, I knew it was going to bite you, it bit my boot. As the crowd continued refuting the officers' claims and voicing outrage with what the officers had done, Officer Brooks began attempting to belittle and discredit the bystanders in order to encourage the other officers to disregard the witness's statement. Here's the thing, y'all didn't see the whole story. The crowd, however, would have none of it. One bystander stating, we watched what happened. We support you guys, but I'm second guessing it now. Another yelled that officers Brook Brooks and Taylor were lying and we watched what happened, we watched what happened. One particularly angry woman stated that Joshua is frequently present where the incident happened, but it had never hurt anyone. Officer Brooks repeated his fictitious allegations by saying, "You did you see the dog bite his foot? We watched it happen. In response, Officer Brooks threatened the woman saying, I'll put you in handcuffs. After her efforts to bolster her false narrative and silence the crowd's open dissent, Officer Brooks made similar statements to a woman who chastised what the officers had done and who informed Officer Brooks that she had made a report of animal abuse. Of particular importance, Officer Brooks expressly acknowledged her unlawful actions while mistakenly believing she had blocked the audio and video of her body camera and proclaiming to the officers was, the officers would suffer no consequences for their actions. I know they aren't going to do anything about it. Despite the entire crowd of witnesses forcefully disputing the officer's narrative, officers Brooks and Taylor deceit, disparage, and claims they all saw well, the aftermath the resulting. After nearly 15 or 20 other officers arrived on scene, petitioner left in handcuffs sitting on the ground, pleading with the officers and bystanders for help, asking them for, to record and vacillate between begging and crying to anyone who would listen. I need my dog. She is my medical device. Where is my dog? Where is my dog? Furthering her attempts to convince her fellow officers to ignore the uniform statements and the crowd that officers Brooks and Taylor had unlawfully harmed Joshua and lied as to the events that occurred. Officer Brooks attempted to shape the narrative for the officers just arriving and begin making condescending statements to Joshua, such as, we politely asked for you for your ID, to which Joshua responded, I gave you my ID, which was verified by the body cam footage that Joshua's ID was laying on the ground behind him and directly underneath the hand he provided, he used to provide, 
to officers. Officers Brooks then began embellishing the dog bite story, claiming Sunshine bit Officer Taylor, who tased it before it could bite me. Disillusioned, Joshua responded, and the body cam footage confirms, my dog was running away and you shot her when she was running away. I don't know where my dog is. Where is my dog? The officers ignored Joshua's pleas to find, protect, and obtain medical care for Joshua's dog and dismissed the critical need for Joshua to have access to his service dog in the very situation in which Sunshine, he needed Sunshine the most. Mr. As more officers on the scene began asking questions based in part on the uniform angry responses from the crowd, Brooks and Taylor began struggling to select which theory they believed they could most effectively utilize to lie to their supervisors and fellow officers in order to conceal their unlawful actions. Despite acknowledging that she had never seen Petitioner Panhandle, Brooks stated to Petitioner in front of uh, supervisors, listen, I asked you to get your stuff and not Panhandle. Brooks then altered her original description of petitioner's purported resisting actions from claiming petitioner refused to provide his ID to a newly fabricated claim that after Taylor told you that you were under arrest, you started to resist and I took you to the ground. This claim, like the others made by Taylor and Brooks, is directly refuted by the body camera footage being requested in this petition. Likewise, Taylor told his superior a very elaborate lie as to why he shot Sunshine with his taser, which began with his representations that his dog runs over to my foot and nips at my, he nips at my foot. He doesn't nip, but he actually bites my boot, but it doesn't break my boot. At this point, I'm... As Taylor continued attempting to promote this narrative, his superior looked directly at Taylor's boot that he claimed was bitten, which is captured clearly on the body camera, and sees there was no evidence of a bite, nibble, or even a scratch. Realizing his superior had seen through the dishonest story, Taylor nervously begins telling a more elaborate and demonstrably false story. Dog jumps on the hood, and I'm thinking it's going to bite Brooks at this point because the dog is obviously worried and it's going to try to protect its owner, and it already bit me. At this point, once it looks like the dog was about to cross to Brooks, I tased it because that was a logical thing to do. So my partner, it ran away. That was a logical thing to do instead of shooting the dog. You get what I'm saying, and so I can protect my partner because I'm not about to let my partner get bit by a dog. It's a very well-trained dog, and I asked him to call the dog off. After it bit me, this can be seen on camera. Despite admittedly never witnessing Petitioner engage in any panhandling or un other unlawful activities, Taylor attempted to justify his use of force and decision to charge Petitioner for standing on a public access way by claiming in front of his super supervisor that Taylor had told Petitioner not to remain on a public sideway and or other publicly available land, which is not a crime, several days earlier during his first interaction with Petitioner. Unsatisfied with Taylor's attempt to justify the use of force and subsequent intolerable behavior that had just occurred, the supervisor specifically asked if Taylor had asked Petitioner to move from the place he was standing today or to discontinue panhandling today, as opposed to Taylor's claim that he gave such an instruction days before, to which Officer Taylor finally admitted that he had not. As all of this was happening, Petitioner was handcuffed on the ground crying, whimpering, and clearly in urgent distress and begging for anyone to help him. <clears throat> as he began slipping into a serious psychiatric episode caused by the officer's conduct. Where's my dog? Where's my dog? Please help me. Why are y'all doing this to me? I was giving you my ID. It's on your body cam. All I do is smile and wave at people. I just want to know where my dog is. Where's my dog? That gives you no right to tase my dog and tackle me. I was literally handing you my ID. Where's my dog, man? Where's my dog? What did y'all do with my dog? Why are y'all treating me like this? I'm a disabled veteran with a service dog. They won't tell me where Sunshine is. Where's my dog? Not a single police officer would respond to Petitioner, and instead they openly laughed at and demeaned him as clearly shown in the body cam footage until he was being placed in a patrol car to be escorted to jail. The officer preparing to transport Petitioner informed Petitioner that apparently a concerned citizen took the dog, to which Petitioner exclaimed, You just let my dog go with a stranger? Despite the body cam footage showing that animal control had been present and attempting to secure sunshine before police instructed animal control to leave by stating, quote, let me handle it. The officer responded that we can't help it. We didn't let it go. Someone picked it up and took it. Astonished and beginning to panic, petitioner asked, do you all have the person's phone number? To which the officers respond, quote, no. 
Petitioner was transported to the jail and charged with misdemeanor soliciting begging, an infraction of soliciting from a highway, and two misdemeanor counts of resisting arrest. During the booking process, which was also captured on body cameras, Officer Brooks and Taylor belittled Petitioner and mocked his disability. In the exact same fashion as Officer Taylor improperly interacted with Petitioner uh, on October 9, 2021, Officer Taylor started stated to Petitioner that you walk up and down the street all the time. You're not disabled. Your legs work fine. Officer Taylor also reiterated that he had previously expressed to Petitioner by stating, I have a disability rating and I still work. My cousin's uncle has a rating and he still works. You should have just listened and complied. Officer Taylor and Brooks also abused their authority, which Magistrate Mark Oakes facilitated by insisting that petitioner's bond should be excessively increased by claiming petitioner, a homeless individual with no vehicle, no resources, and no history of missing court dates, was a flight risk. As a result, Magistrate Oakes imposed a $3,000 bond for incredibly minor offenses and also set the bond that petitioner could not utilize a bondsman, which required him, again, a homeless and deeply impoverished man, to pay the entire amount. While petitioner was incarcerated, jail officers, despite police refusing to secure petitioner's service dog, brought Sunshine's service jacket to petitioner, which pain, plainly demonstrated that the officers could and should have ensured Sunshine remained in their custody and was kept safe. One of the taser darts was still stuck through the back of the vest. Mr. Before Roar. the arrest... Mr. Roar, I'm Don't sorry. Don't interrupt you, him, time sir. Up. You keep speaking, brother. <clears throat> Before the arrest, Sunshine Service Jacket had two patches identifying her as a service dog and saying you do not separate from him. Mr. However, Roar. when the vest was provided to petitioner in jail, both patches have been removed in an apparent effort to conceal the officer's knowingly unlawful actions and violations of state and federal law by separating a prescribed service dog from her owner. As of today, July 23rd, 2022, the body cam footage is yet to be released. Contact information is in the description below, as well as links where you can help contribute to Joshua if you'd like to do so.